Right, Start it now. I, mean, yes. I want to thank Jackie and Pat and their entire family, Michelle, everybody, for all the hard work they did to put this together and to keep it a surprise. Um, we had to come up with a creative way to get mom and dad here, and it started off with a King of the Tramps gig, which got mom going, but dad was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to go. And so then we added a golf tournament, and so then he still was just a little bit questioning, and so Riley, his uh, grandson, said that he would golf with them, and that did it. But we did not have him decided to come until last week, so it was a little nerve-wracking trying to get that taken care of. But anyway, I uh, have up here Elliot, Dad's brother, and then Susan, Mom's sister, who were both uh, there when they got married 50 years ago. Um, once again, thank you everyone for coming. This is such a special day. Um, I know there are some very special people that aren't here. Wilma, Tom, and uh, of course David. Um, but I really strongly feel that they are here. They are with us. And um, I think Dave helped keep this a secret because I don't know how else in the heck I could have done it. So anyway, with that said, I'm going to let Elliot talk first and then Susan. Thank you again. <laughs> and we always smelled cover 13 cows, and um, he'd lay in bed, and I'd get up early in the morning and go out and milk. And, uh, so that's one of the hells. <laughs> I'm bigger than he is, but he's three years older, and he could always quit me. So we never did try that. He left home, went to Ames, to a year of school there, and didn't like it, went to the Navy. I went to pre-med at Drake. Worked at Des Moines Methodist Hospital, met my wife there, who was a nurse, coming student nurse at the time. We got married in June, and lived in a little house not too far from the campus. And next thing I know, Dee was there. wasn't doing much. I didn't know what he wanted to do, and he didn't either. But he would get some nights, go down to the local pub and play his trumpet and get free booze. <laughs> One night he came in and said. Everything's tired outside. Everything's tired outside. You had to be there to understand it. Darla and I laughed and we about wet our pants, and now 50 years later, we still say that once in a while when things get uptight around the house. We didn't know what happened to him then, but we moved down to here, med school next year. Had a trailer now. Joni was born to us. She's here now. Next thing I know, he appears in our trailer. I thought, oh no, not again. <laughs> He didn't know what he wanted to do. He really wanted to join the FBI, but without that index finger, he was disqualified. <laughs> we were right in the middle of the Cold War with Russia, and he wanted to learn Russian. Well, I was busy as a freshman in med school, so I don't really know what happened until Rose that came along. He became a changed man. He started taking showers and dressing. <laughs> <laughs> The next thing I know, he uh, moved down to Oklahoma City. He joined a large transportation outfit. I moved to Southern Illinois after I served a couple years in the Air Force, delivering babies during the Vietnam War. And one time he struck out for Southwestern uh, United States to take a little bit of family vacation. We stopped at his house in 
to Oklahoma City, and he was a dispatcher. I'm sure he had at least 17 phones going all at the same time, and he was answering as an old man. The next thing you know, he's in western Iowa, sort of his own business, and no matter what the president says, he did build it. So, with that said, we're going to toast him now or after you speak? Two toasts. Two toasts. Two toasts to DG and Rosie and many years to come. Well, my name is Susan Donovan Reese, and I'm Rosemary's sister. I think most of you know that. And it was 50 years ago that I was very proud to stand beside them as they were married up in Collins, Iowa, before a handful of people, a literal handful of people, who all loved them and wished them well as they started out in their married life. Newlyweds, young bride and groom. And uh, now, 50 years later, I'm very proud to stand here with them as a, as a whole yard full of people are here to wish you the best and to uh, celebrate this 50th year anniversary. And now we, we celebrate the 50 years that have passed and we are wishing you the very best in the future, good health, good times, more good memories, and lots of fun. And. Uh, been such an important part of all of our lives and we love you and now I'd like to raise our glasses to Rosemary and D.G. Partridge. Okay, who else would like to have say something? Pat, were you going to say something? Who else? <laughs> the Toastmaster, Stephen. I just want to acknowledge, look what Pat and Jackie have done to this house. Doesn't it look good? And they put a lot of work into it, so let's give them a big round of applause. I say nothing else, Pat. You're Patrick. His grandson, too. No, and of course we couldn't have pulled this off by ourselves, Stephen and Jim and and everybody that made this thing happen. All the, right, every little bit of the ruse was carried out with uh, with uh, Secret Service precision. And everything went off. So and thank you guys all. Thank everybody for making it happen. The food was delicious. The company was wonderful. And the weather was cooperative. So cheers to everybody. Cheers. cheers. And, uh, happy 50th, you guys. Love you.